to give our prayer and our praise. Surrender ourselves to you. We will surrender, oh God, our minds to you. Our 
heart, our souls, our spirits, our body, we commit to you today in the name of Jesus. Take control, O oh God. Take control of our homes. Take control, O oh God, of our jobs. Take control, O oh God, of our family. Take control of our children. Take control, O oh God, of the parents. Take control in the name of Jesus of every relationship. May God that you are allowed to come within our lives, to God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for being God. For beside you, there is none other. Father, we present, O oh God, everything to you this day that God that will take place in this house. Oh, mercy, God. Receive glory, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we present, O oh God, before you, Lord, those that are sick. We pray that God of your healing balm, O oh God, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God, may seek out those ones, uh, Lord, that you will heal, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Heal minds, heal souls, heal spirits, heal bodies today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power of prayer. God, we thank you, O oh God, for the anointing, O oh God, of prayer. Help us, O oh God, to pray in the Spirit, even as we live in the Spirit. God, to walk in the Spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we commit, O oh God, ourselves to you. We commit our prayers, O oh God, to you. Take control for we realize that God, our prayers, O oh God, is a covering for us. Our prayers is a covering, O oh God, for others. God, cover, O oh God, Lord, our families. Cover our friends. Cover, O oh God, this nation. Cover, O oh God, Lord, the government. In the name of Jesus, cover the churches. Cover, O oh God, Lord, hallelujah. The pastors, O oh God, the Lord, the preachers. Cover the teachers. Cover, O oh God, Lord, the missionaries. Come, O oh God, the evangelists. Come, O oh Lord, hallelujah, everyone that God that has a part, O oh God, Lord, in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, O oh God, Lord, we thank you for being God. For beside you, there is none other. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer. Father, help us, O oh God, not to, not to take this, O oh God, Lord, hallelujah, just a ordinary God. For we like that God, that prayer, O oh God, is communicating with you, that God. So help us to communicate with you, the God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh God, Lord, to continue, O oh God, Lord, to look to you, who is the all and the finisher, O oh God, of our faith. Help us, O oh God, to pray without ceasing, knowing that, God, Lord, that you hear and that you answer his prayer. Help us, our prayer, not to be, O oh God, Lord, a minute or two, God. Lord, O oh God, Lord, help us, O oh God, to hallelujah, the tarry in prayer with you, the God, knowing Lord, that you, O oh God, Lord, honors our prayer of your way in our life, dear God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon your people. God, we surrender to you today. We commit our lives to you today. We commit our prayers to you today. We commit our service to you today. Father, we commit everything to God that is associated with our lives. We commit it to your hands today. Take control in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon this house. Fall fresh, O oh God, upon this people. Father, anoint, O oh God, our pastor. Anoint, O oh God, his wife. Anoint their children. Anoint their home. Anoint the ministry in the name of Jesus. Every member, O oh God, of this house. Lord, every, O oh God, auxiliary. In the name of Jesus, take control. Anoint, O oh God, with the double bond of your Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. Father, as we call upon you, give air to our prayers. Give air, O oh God, of our supplication this morning. Of your way in our life, that God help us to be an example of the believers, God, in our words and our conversation, the charity and spirit of faith, O oh God, and the purity. We thank you, Lord, for the honor. We thank you for giving us audience this morning, God. You said that, God, your angels and gathered around about those, oh God, that fear you. Oh God, we thank you for giving us audience. We thank you for the presence, oh God, of your angels. We thank you, oh God, for your presence in the name of Jesus. Cover us, God. We need your covering. Destroy, oh God, Lord, the weights of the enemy in our lives. God, destroy the weight of the enemy in our presence. Destroy the weight of the enemy in our homes. Destroy the weight of the enemy in our jobs. Destroy the weight of the enemy, O oh God, even in your house. Destroy the weight of the enemy, O oh God, on the streets. Lord, that you would, O oh God, Lord, grace us, O oh God, Lord, to travel on. Of your way, Spirit of the living God, 
before fresh to stay. And God, we call upon you. Hear our prayers. Answer us, God. We seek your faith, God. We seek your faith, Lord. We seek your hands, dear God. Oh, God, show us your glory. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. Move by your spirit in our midst. Move by your spirit. Help us to trust in you, God, this day. Help us to trust you with all our hearts, God, that we would lean not upon our own understanding. Father, in all our ways, help us to acknowledge you. Father, we need your direction. Yes. We need God to be directed by you. Yes. God, direct us. Yes. Lord, instruct us, strengthen us, oh God, heal us, anoint us, God. Move by your spirit in our lives. Bless us, God. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour out your blessing upon us, God, and we'll be overfilled and we'll remove God in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray that God the seal, the seal us, the virus and the hedges around about us in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives. God, we need you. We need you more now than ever, God. Have your way. Strengthen us, Lord. Father, we thank you for the anointed. We realize that the enemy is out to destroy the anointed in our lives. But help us, oh God, to stay under you, to stay under prayer, to stay under the umbrella of the Holy Spirit. Have your way in our lives. Strengthen us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your prayer of your love and your answer. And we seek to continue to honor you in this time of worship and praise, oh God. Because you know our hearts, God. Well. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's give him thanks. Let's give him praise, let's give him glory, let's give him honor. I didn't say give it to Ever Kelly, so let's give it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, musicians, come on, let's, let's give it to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is worthy, he is worthy. Come on, let's shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath.
Because we can't really hear from the woman of God with the word of God today. And I'm quite certain we're going to continue to celebrate even after she releases the word and during the time she releases God's word. Because this is a celebration of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So let's all linger to our feet. And at this time we are ministering this song, we ask that you go around and greet one another. It tastes good to see you. I know you didn't know you. We got to continue to encourage one another. Let's all stand. If you haven't finished writing up that love letter of the finances to God.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day and this new month. We are glad that we are alive to be here just to worship you. Change our hearts and our minds as we look into your word today. Help us to only see and hear what you are saying. Give us the direction in which we need to follow for our lives. Lord, I pray even now that you will hide me behind your cross. Let the words of my mother and the dedication of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I surrender it all unto you. Use me to bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today, for a short while, we will be looking at the pocket. Family. And whose are you? Family. And whose are you? Taken from, from Joshua 24. 14 to 15, which was read earlier, but I want to read it again, see now it's just two verses, it says, now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt serve me, the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What is family? Some, all of us might have a different idea or concept of what family is. Or what family is to you. Um, the dictionary tells us family is a group of one or more parents and their children living together as a unit. It's also all the descendants of a common ancestor and a group of related states. Whose family are you part of? Here's what the Bible says about family. The concept, the concept of family is extremely important in the Bible, both in the physical sense and in the theological sense. Family, the concept of family was introduced in the very beginning, as we see in Genesis chapter 1 and 28. God blessed them and, and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the earth. God's plans for creation was for men and women to marry and have children. A man and a woman would form a one flesh union through marriage, Genesis 2 and 24. And they with their children become a family, the essential building block of human society. We also see early on that family members were to look after and take care of one another. When God asked him, where is your brother, Abel? Where is Abel, your brother? Cain responds with, hmm, am I my brother's keeper? The implication is that yes, Cain was expected to be Abel's keeper and vice versa. So today, church, we are to be our brother's keeper. When God asks you, you know sometimes you put people send it close to your mind. Have you talked to so and so lately? Do you know what this individual is going through? Most of the time, we have to say we don't know. Because
because guess what? We didn't check up on it. We didn't find the time to even WhatsApp or to, to, to just look out to see what is happening in our brothers and sisters' lives. We are part of this family. Even though we have our individual family, God has placed us here to be a support system for one another. And so we can't be like Cain and say, hey, am I in my brother's keeping? No. We have to be able to say, Lord, I check on such and such and so and so on. Um, they might be going through a small setback even now, but we are praying one for another. Can we do that during this month, the month of family? The month of love there, well, we're supposed to be showing more than saying. So let us do that for the kingdom of God. Starting this month, if we have not already been doing so. Let God save Noah from the flood. It wasn't an individual case of salvation, but a salvation for him, his wife, his sons, his son's wife. In other words, his family was saved. Genesis 6 and 18. God is calling us to encourage and to bring along our family so that they can be saved and be in this body and be a born in this body called believers. Because he has called us. He wants us to bring those who are a part of us with us. I mean, sometimes when you ask them to come, they have all kind of excuses. But we have to keep trying. We have to keep encouraging. And one day, hey, they're going to be here with us in this family. Amen? When God called Abraham out of Herod, he called him and his family. Genesis 12, 4 to 5. The sign of the covenant which God made with Abraham, circumcision was to be applied to all lives within one's household. Whether they were born into the family or part of the household staff of that family. Genesis 17, 12 to 13. In other words, the covenant God made with Abraham was about family, not individuals. So, we need to start looking at ourselves as being a part of a family. Bringing, encouraging, and propelling others, also compelling others, to come be a part of God's family. God loves souls, and he requires us to work while it is yet day, because the time is going to come when pay. Our voice, our voices will be hushed in death and we can't do it anymore. But we would have said, hey, Lord, I have done all that you have called me to do. And even though I might have faltered here and there, help me to be consistent in telling others about you and bringing them into your family. We are all born into the family of God. When we accept him, into our lives. John 1, 12 to 13. And Romans 8 and 15, which talks about us being adopted into God's family. So what does the Bible say about family? The physical family is the most important building block in society. And as such, we should nurture and protect it. But most important, most important, that is, in this new creation, after we would have given our lives to God, we need to thank God for helping us to be a part of his family. Amen. We have to be encouraged to be a part of the spiritual family of God. And the church, made up of all kinds of people who are called upon, and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This family of God 
has been drawn from every nation, every tribe, every people, and every language. So no one is exempted from this family of God. Revelation 7 and 9. No one is exempted. And the defining define characteristics of this spiritual family is that we love one another. Do you love all the people in your family? Huh? Do you love all the people? I know some of the people in our family get on our nerves. Some of the people in our family are carries to the last edge. And we just want to wrap them up aside the head and say, hey, get some sense because you are part of this family. And this family don't do that. Okay? So, but we are encouraged to love them in spite of, to love them unconditional. And that's our immediate family. How much more for us in the house of God? How much more for us in the church? As a family, we have to love. I have to love you. Whether I feel like it or not, I have to love you. Because if I don't love you, I can't say I love God. So we have to look beyond the master. We have to look beyond the, 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 uh, what can I do to, in a different light? We have to look beyond all of that and love one another. John 13, 35, 34, 35. So Joshua is telling us today, we have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. He said, because as for him and his house, this is what he is doing. He made a statement, hey, this is what I want, this is what I'm doing. And his family have to come on board and come along with him. In the church, the Lord has placed pastors and leaders over us. And when the the, the, the body, the head comes together and say, hey, this is the direction that we are going in. We have to say in our hearts, Lord, if this is where you are leading us, here am I. Use us to bring glory and honor to your name. We have to make that choice. We can't fall and pull step back. No. We have to put our hearts to the plow and get the work done in this family. Joshua spoke for his house. Can we speak for our house and the house of God today? As for me, we're going to do this. As for us, we're going to fall in line and do what the Lord has called us to. Life depends on the choices we make, whether it is good or bad. Life depends on the choices we make. The first human being, Adam, he made a choice that still affects us today. And now some of our choices are, we still reap it from the consequences of our actions. But if we put it in God's hand, he is going to walk with us through it, and he is going to be there for us. He chose, he was given a choice to obey or to disobey God, to choose spiritual life or death. He had the choice to eat of the tree of life or from the tree of good, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. While both trees produced edible fruits, their effects were completely different. As Adam's choice revealed either his disobedience or his obedience. This was the real issue. By eating the forbidden fruit, Adam openly expresses rebellion against God and 
God's authority. Obedience or disobedience to God is demonstrated in very simple ways as the example of Adam Shores. His disobedience led to spiritual death and only the work of God in regeneration and the new birth can bring sinners to know spiritual and eternal life. Beliefs in Christ and repentance make the abundance of God's redeeming grace available to us. But guess what? God does not force this on us. He gives us a choice. Who are you choosing today? Who are you choosing today? God wants to have a relationship with us so that we can enjoy his life. He chose us, but he also leave the choice to us to accept him. We see this in the life of the Israelites. God had chosen them, and because of his covenant with Abraham, brought them out of slavery in Egypt. He protected and fed them on their journey in the wilderness and gave them a land of their own. He was their God. They were his people. His people did not choose God, but God chose them. And as the Israelites stood on the threshold of Canaan, Joshua exhorted them to, hey, serve with fear and faithfulness to the Lord who has chosen them. But God forced none of them to be his people. They had a choice to make, to serve the Lord or the gods of the Egyptians and the Amorites. This seemed to be a very easy choice to make. But from the history of the Israelites, we realize that not, it was not such an easy choice that they made. Unfortunately, many people today still find it difficult to make God their choice. Even though he has protected them, provided for them, healed them, he has been there when they, when they call on him, but still they choose not to accept him as Lord and Savior in their lives. Each one of us has to make a choice. Who will we serve? Are we going to serve things? People? No, we ought to serve God. You either serve God or the devil. What is your choice today? Who are you serving today? Whose family do you belong to today? No, we're not looking for the future or what happened in the past, no. We're looking at today. We have today. So who are you serving today? Today, I trust and pray that you will belong to the family of God and keep your eyes on him because he is the only one who can bring you and I out of challenging times and difficulties that will come our way. Only him knows what you need and can supply exactly what you need and in exactly the right time that you need it. Philippians 4 and 19 tells us that my God shall supply all your needs, not some of them, but all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If we have chosen Christ, it is not to serve our own purpose, but serve Christ. You know, sometimes people say, I am I'm a Christian, and everything I ask the Lord for, He gives it to me. You know, sometimes we just serve it for things, and not for Him, being who He is in our lives. Accepting Christ does not mean that we can now.
now use them. But that Christ can now use us for his honor and his glory and to defend, fulfill his divine will in our lives. God wants us to conform to the image of his son. His son loves. His son um, encourages. His son was there for all those that came around him. He was there for them. The choice making, this choice makes reading the word of God and applying his truth to our lives a priority. What is prioritize? How do we prioritize our lives? And what do we have as most important in our lives? Warren mostly states this truth about when the child of God, I quote, when the child of God looks into the word of God and sees the Son of God, he is changed by the Spirit of God into the image of God for the glory of God. We are changed when we look and be a part of Christ's family. Others should increasingly see Christ in our lives as we grow in the knowledge for Him. The better we get to know Christ, the more we become like Him in every sense of the word. The choice to serve, to serve God should be the most important decision that we make in our lives. Have you and I made that choice to surrender our lives to the Lord, to accept Him as Lord and Savior, and to do what He has called us to do? We do not always understand or like what is happening in our lives. But to whom can we go? We can only go to one person. Friends fail, family fail, but we can put our trust in God. We can go to him. We can call on him. Jeremiah tells you, he said, call on him. And he will answer and show us great and mighty things. There is only one choice. We don't have two. We don't have three. We have one choice. And when we choose that there are some benefits that comes with the right choice. All your cares, you can lay on them at his feet and not have to be anxious about anything. That's the benefit of us coming to know him as Lord and say, we can say, Lord, hey, I'm hurting right now. I do not understand what is happening, but hey, I lay it at your feet. You know what to do with this? And we just trust him. We get to share in the family of God's fortune here on earth and in eternity. He takes care of us. He meets us as our, he meets us at our point of need. We don't have to worry. He has given us his grace, his kindness, his patience, his glory, his wisdom, his power, and his mercy. All of these are just benefits that the Lord has given us when we choose him. So why are we not choosing him? Why do we wait until we back up? Or we mash our toe? Or we go through some things that hey, that we don't have no control over? Let's choose him. Because he promises to be with us. He promises to be there. No one can take God's grace and mercy from us. It cannot be destroyed by any war, any poor economy, or even natural disaster. Because he is with us, he goes through it with us. He makes sure and he overshadows us. So let us choose him today. He has bestowed upon us his blessings, his Holy Spirit, 
his Holy Spirit, which is our greatest possession, his presence. He has promised his presence with us. He has promised his power with us. He has promised his love with us. He gives us a sense of belonging, acceptance, and importance as the children of a king. We are his heirs. We are his. So let us choose him today. We can hold on to all the promises of God. Not some all that he has made to us and with us and watch them come to pass. Even if it does not come to pass just as we think it should, but well, if it comes to pass according to his will, let us trust him. God has placed us here in the family of Central for this time. He has given us gifts and talents to be used to edify the body and encourage and be a blessing to those in this body and the kingdom of God. Even though we are different in makeup and size and personalities, we are here to honor and worship the one who has called us into his marvelous life and to bring others with us. Souls are important to our Creator and Savior. He has called you and I to the kingdom for such a time as this as we were encouraged last week, Sunday. He has called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Just like how we call Esther, he called each and every one of us for the, in the kingdom for such a time as this. Let us grow in our relationship with the Lord and with this local church family. Let's get involved. Let's get involved. Let us get involved. Let us get involved. Let's not just sit back and wait, but let us get involved. Hey, Pastor, what can I do? This is a new church here. What can I do to help and to push and to advance God's kingdom here and now? We have today. This is a new day. This is a new month. We have now. Let us make the choice to push, to grow our uh, relationship. Let us attend regularly. Let us do our part in building the church of God. Let us give faithfully. Hey, the Lord has blessed you. He has blessed you so that you can be a blessing to others. And a blessing to his, his body. Let us give faithfully. Let us find a place to serve. When you would have come to the end of your journey, what will people say about you and I? She was just a bench woman. Whatever you ask, come. An excuse was given. No, we want to say, hey, so and so serve faithfully their God and their church and their family. Their family can depend on them. Yeah. You know, our family can depend on us. Whenever they call, hey, we are there. Whenever they need prayers, we are there. Yeah. Whenever they need help, we are there. That's our immediate family. Can we say the same for the house of God? Oh, that whatever the house of God needs, we are there to be a support, to be an encouragement. Choose today. Choose today. Reach out to others. Reach out to others. Hey, and let people see God's love. 
shown to you, to those inside and to those outside the house of God. Let them be, let there be a reason. Let them, let, let, they, let our families, our co-workers see and have a reason to come in to God's family. Let us not be a stumbling block, but let us be an encouragement. And so in closing today, whose family do you belong to? I don't know about you, but even though God has made me a part of another physical family on earth, I want to belong to his family, the family of God. And I want to encourage others to come and be a part of this family. By my life living, by my example, I want others to come be a part of this family. Because guess what? He cares what happens to me. Sometimes I might not feel it. Sometimes I might think, hey, Lord, it's only me, what? Or what, why am I going through this? He cares for me because I am a part of his family. I am a part of the family, so he knows exactly what is going on in my life. And he can know exactly, he knows exactly what's going on in your life. You may not say it, but God knows. In the middle of the night when you call it up to him, he knows and he cares, my brothers and sisters. God cares because you have chosen him to be Lord of your life. He knows, guess what, the number of hair on hair, even though you cut your hair all the time, you boil it sometimes, guess what, he knows every grain of hair on your head. He knows the plans he has for you and I, but all we have to do is accept it. And even though sometimes we falter, and we fail him. He is there to pick us up once we confess our sins to him. Let us not, when we fall to our fail, stay down, my brothers and sisters. Let us get up. Let me hurt and take nobody here. Let us still forget about him and, and move on. Lord, I pay this in your heart. You, gotta, you have to help me move him. You have to help me move on. You have to help me look beyond this. Because I know it's more than just this. Amen. This is what the enemy is showing me now and trying to distract me from moving and being focused on you. Help me to look beyond it. Amen. And trust you. We're going to look beyond this here. Amen. Amen. We're going to trust when we can't even trace him more. Or we feel that, hey, Nobody is there. We're going to look beyond that. Because God has people praying for you. Yeah. Even they may not tell you they are praying for you. He has people praying for you. Calling Amen. your name day and night. Amen. So just trust him. Situations might look terrible now. Challenges might have you buckling. Let's look beyond that. Amen. Let's look beyond that and trust him. Trust it, my brothers and sisters. Do not stay down. Pick yourself up. Ask God to help you, Lord. I can't get up. My knees might be hurt. I can't get up. But the Lord will help you. And I want to call upon Him. Let us be obedient, church. And let us choose wisely today. Because sometimes we only have today. So let us do what we need to do today. Let us be our brothers people today. Let us meditate on this word today. Let us pray today. And let us trust God today. Let us. I say let you. I say let me let us. 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 Let us choose wisely today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We choose you. We surrender our all our lives totally to you. Forgive us if we have chosen others before you. 
we turn it all over to you. Have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be encouraged and choose Jesus today. Oh, have you received that word? Come on, put your hands together one more time for us and sit down each time. Today, today, let's choose God's ideas, God's plan of action, God's strategy, his techniques to handle each other in a special way. Today. <laughs> 